God When I in awesome wonder consider all The worlds thy hand hath made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout The universe displayed Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul my Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art And when I think That God is Son not sparing Sent him to die I scarce can take it in That on that cross my burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul my Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art When Christ shall come With shouts of acclamation And take me home With joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my god how great you are then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Then sings my soul my Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art Hello and welcome to our online sermon for 29th of October my name is Phil Marsh and uh, I'm part of the ministry team here at St Mary's and whoever you are and wherever you're from, you are welcome here. The theme for our service this Sunday is Harvest and we're supporting the work of Food Bank, which is an initiative that we run together with other churches in uh, Ely. And Food Bank is supported by the Trussell Trust and we're going to start this morning with a small video from the Trussell Trust. I lost my job, I was in a really bad way. I was struggling to meet the bills, just feeding the children. I was going without food just so that they ate. The first time I used it, um, I was really anxious, really scared, didn't know what to expect. I thought that I'd let people down because I was having to ask for help. I'm quite a proud person and I don't like people to think that I'm struggling. But yeah, it was, it was hard to do. Over the recent years, we've seen more and more people coming to food banks for emergency food because they can't even afford the basics. And the pandemic has pushed even more people into extreme poverty. Churches are vital to the work of food banks. They open up their buildings, donate food, provide volunteers and leaders 
and show amazing care and compassion to people who need emergency food and support. And we'll continue to work together to provide this support for as long as it's needed. Food banks are doing an incredible job, but no one wants to have to use a food bank to be able to feed their family. And it isn't right that so many people are needing to. It's so important that food banks don't become the new normal. All of us depend on other people for our well-being, whether that's our families, friends, employers, businesses or public services. And what we see at the food bank is that often it is people who have the least in our communities who are most affected by the decisions we make as a society about things like benefits, housing and employment. Unless these decisions come to better reflect the principles of dignity and compassion, justice and community, we will continue to see people being trapped in poverty and unable to enjoy a fuller life that Jesus intends for us all. As Christians, we need to be seeking justice and advocating for change, as well as showing compassion to people facing a crisis. So at the Trussell Trust, we want to work together with food banks, with churches, with communities, businesses, local and national governments for a more compassionate and just society where no one needs emergency food because we all have enough money for the essentials. That's why we're inviting you to join us in building a hunger-free future, a future without the need for food banks. It's a fantastic invitation to be involved in building a hunger-free future, seeking a more just and compassionate society. This is ultimately about the Kingdom of God. If you imagine the Kingdom of God coming in all its fullness, what does it look like? Well, for certain, one of the things that would be true about the Kingdom of God is there would be no one that was hungry. All would be satisfied. In our reading today, taken from... Uh, Take, taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, we hear of something about how our attitude towards our wealth and riches uh, ought to be. This is from Luke, at uh, chapter 12, beginning at verse 16. Jesus told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you've prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. This parable of the uh, fortunate rich man who has the big harvest, I think, is kind of really clear. There's something about how we are to view the things that we have and how we are to use them and offer them in service of others. I thought this morning we might reflect a little bit on what it means to be rich towards God. This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich towards God. In the first instance, we might think, of course, of it being about how we share our wealth and our generosity. That begins, and at harvest time particularly, with actually remembering where all our good things come from and giving thanks to God for them. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 7 and onwards says this, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks and streams and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey. A land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing. A land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. 
when you've eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws and his decrees that I'm giving you this day. Two things from this passage stand out. One is the promise of being established in a land that is plentiful, where all are satisfied. Again, that kingdom hope looking forward. But secondly, recognising that all the good that we do have is a foretaste of that heavenly kingdom and comes from God. A great grace that we use lifted from the pages of the Bible. All good things around us come from heaven above and thank the Lord for all his love. When we think about harvest, when we think about uh, our, our, our giving, we first of all start from a place of thanksgiving to a generous God from whom all good things come. But the idea of giving generously isn't just found in the Old Testament, we find it in the New Testament as well. In 2 Corinthians at chapter 9, beginning at verse 6, we read this. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You'll be enriched in every way so you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you've proved yourselves Others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surprising grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. I love this flow of generosity God gives to us. He moves us to be generous towards others. That generosity towards others impacts them and their thanksgiving is lifted to God and their prayers in thanks for those who have given to them become further blessing for all involved. I love that idea that the more we give, that, that giving becomes expanded, like in concentric circles outwards, like a, a pebble dropped into a pond, and those circles spread outwards. Quite the contrast to the rich farmer in our first parable from the Gospel, where he holds everything to himself and then loses his life, and no good is gained from it. Instead, we have this thanksgiving in us for the good things we have, we, we're moved by God's spirit to share generously with others and they are moved in return in prayers of thanksgiving and it impacts their lives and the lives of those that they pray for and onwards and onwards and onwards. Uh, folk who are on the receiving end of generosity are always grateful and thankful. It lifts them and it lifts the community that they are a part of. Part of your giving, our giving towards food bank is enabling that expression of joy and generosity and thankfulness that begins uh, with God and is worked out through us, given to others and on and on and on it goes. I love that picture of God at work throughout a community. The compulsion for generosity, though, doesn't just flow from our thanksgiving for what we have received. It also flows from the very heart of God and from our desire to serve the purposes of God, to serve the very heart of God. Uh, we read God's desire for justice for the poor in the Old Testament in particular. 
in Isaiah chapter 1 verses 15 to 17 we read this when you spread out your hands in prayer I hide my eyes from you even when you offer many prayers I'm not listening for your hands are full of blood wash and make yourselves clean take your evil deeds out of my sight stop doing wrong learn to do right Seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. God's passion is for justice, for the poor and for the least. Or in Isaiah 58 verses 2 to 7. For day after day they seek me out, they seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of the fasting, you do as you please and exploit your workers. Your fasting ends in quarrelling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists can't fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high? Is this the kind of fast I've chosen, only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is what you call a fast a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Again, God not requiring fancy displays of holiness, rather desiring to see us seek justice, to share our food with the hungry. It's found left, right and centre in the Old Testament. Amos chapter 5 verses 22 and 24. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I won't accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I'm not going to listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. The very heart of God is for justice and righteousness. One of the things about food banks is that we've seen an increase in the number of people needing to make use of them. In that way, food banks stand prophetically in our time, pointing towards something that is not right in our society. As Christians, we are called to see our world transform, to play our part in seeing God's kingdom come. Tackling food poverty, sharing our food with others, is part of that transformation. Through the work of Food Bank, both in terms of the giving of food parcels, but also the way they work with other uh, non-governmental organisations and are able to speak truth to power, uh, we are playing our part in seeking God's kingdom come here on earth. And that task is not just a, a spiritual task where we pray for it to come, but we act practically to see that transformation made in our own communities. In this way, we can work towards that picture of the kingdom of God, of a hunger free future. That way we can point towards our desire, our ambition to serve God's plans and purposes in our generation to do away with injustice and to seek righteousness. We've been looking at the I am sayings of Jesus and throughout that we've seen that Jesus has offered life. And when we looked at the I am a good shepherd, I am the good shepherd, he says, I have come that they may have life and life to the full or life in abundance. 
things like our interaction with food bank our donating to food bank is part of that seeking life in abundance for all not just for ourselves food bank is just one of the ways in which we can serve our local community and make a real difference to people in need might we all work together to seek the good of god's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven let's pray Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that your passion is for justice, that you seek the good of all and that you call us as your people to join with you in seeing your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Stir up within us, we pray, the gift of generosity that we might give freely of that which you've given to us, that we might truly share our food with the poor, that we might play our part in seeing your kingdom come. Lord, we long for that day when all your children are free to praise your holy name. Come in power and bring your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven and help us to be part of the means of making that a reality in our generation, we pray. In Jesus' name and for your glory and that all may be blessed. Amen. Though we're celebrating the work of Food Bank this uh, harvest time, we receive donations for Food Bank all year round. If you check out um, uh, their webpage, you can either find it through our church webpage or you can Google Food Bank Ely. You can find other ways to support the Food Bank. Just to bring things to a close this morning, just to say that we're looking forward to uh, 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 exploring live streaming our services at some point in the near future. And we'd love to have some feedback um, from you, uh, from you as part of our online community. It would also be great to capture something of who our online community is so we can keep you up to date with what's going on in other ways other than just through our online sermons. So if you'd be willing, it'd be great if you could drop St Mary's office an email at St uh, office at St Mary's org, just to say that you're part of our online community and would be interested in finding out more about what's going on in the life of the church and if, if you'd be willing to give us some feedback on streaming services when we start that in the not too distant future. In the meantime, we pray that you would be blessed where you are. And uh, we're encouraged by the times that some of you uh, write in and let us know what's going on. And, um, and to encourage you as an online community, we've even had a recent request uh, from one of you for a baptism. So uh, we're really thrilled to know that faith at home is, is alive and that God is working in your homes. So please be encouraged and do be in touch as we explore how we might develop this part of our church together in the future. Let's finish with a final prayer of blessing. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you and those you love and care for and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. What you require Freely we 
Send us out, fill us up and send us out.